Peppa Pig! <laughs> Hello guys. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I am going to teach you all, how I bundle hairstyles for Yandere Simulator or how I bundle objects for my videos. It's a simple process. First we are going to open the folder of our game. Here is the launcher and here is the folder, and as you can see, it's completely untouched, no mods, nothing extra. This is a very basic Yandere simulator that you download, to bundle and spawn hairstyles and other stuff. We need pose mod. Don't get it wrong. It's not Bruh. pose mode of the game. It's an external pose mod, by KGFTBZ. It has three versions. One was used before 2019. And second one was used after 2019. And third one is very recent, I don't use it as it's kind of complicating for me. Hey bitch, dumb bitch, stupid bitch, retarded bitch, slow bitch, special ass bitch, stupid ass bitch. So first we have to download the pose mod from the link that is in the description. Now, I have already downloaded it. Here it is, in all its glory. Now we have to extract it to reveal the actual treasure. So these are the files that we would copy and then paste in the Yandere Simulators folder. Perfect! We successfully installed Pose Mod. Okay so now we are good to go, so what we need for the bundle is, obviously our hair model and its texture. And then we need two more folders, link to download both the folders would be in the description. I would explain the story of these two folders in a bit. We will open Unity and then we would make a new project. Let's name this tutorial hair. 12 seconds later. So this is our new project. So first, what are these folders? The folder name essential is actually responsible for making a bundle. As you can see if I delete this folder then the bundle option also disappears. And this other folder called effects is actually responsible for the tune effect that most of the models have. I would explain that in a bit. So now, let's import our mesh and our texture. Now we drag your model into this tab. As you can see, it appeared on the screen. The first thing you have to do is to make sure that the position of the mesh is set to zero. Now you can click the right button of your mouse and move it here and there to see with different angles. Use the WASD keys to move forward backward and or to sides. As you can see it automatically created a folder named materials. This folder actually contains the default white texture of your mesh that you would have to edit. In simpler words, put your texture in this folder and then click this sphere. Grab your texture and drag it to albedo. Oh! And then drag it again to detailed albedo. As you can see it changed the color of the mesh. Now if you pay some close attention, it wouldn't be hard to notice that this is not how the hair textures look in the game. The reason behind it is that the game actually uses a tune effect on the models. And you would have to import the folders to give the texture the tune effect. So let's import the folders. Now click the sphere and change the shader from here. Bruh. As you can see you would have to options in tune, basic and basic outline. There is no need to get confused. Pussy. Professor Izakura Kamimura will teach you. Oh. The difference between basic and basic outline is simple. One has outline while the other one doesn't have an outline. 
so I would select basic and as you can see it has the tune effect but with no outlines. And now I would select the basic outline effect, and as you can see that the model now has outlines. You can also increase or decrease the thickness. Personally I like it without outlines so I would choose basic. Some other thing that I also want to tell you is that. Let's just suppose that if you import your model then it doesn't automatically creates a folder named material. What now? Don't worry it's not end of the world. Okay so for the sake of explaining. I made another project and imported everything and it automatically made a folder named materials. I would delete it to show what to do if it wasn't automatically created for you. So to make your material. First right click and then go to create. And then choose material. Name it whatever you want. And give it the textures like we did before. Now if I put the mesh on the screen it's completely pink because I actually deleted its original texture. But to give your mesh the texture, simply drag this new sphere and slap it on your mesh. There you go. Your mesh is textured. Now after successfully applying the textures, you have to name your mesh something simpler and easier. So name it whatever you want. Now right click and choose create empty. It would create kinda like an empty folder, give this folder the exact same name as your mesh. Make sure to position this to zero as well, and now just grab you mesh and put it in this folder like this. Now grab the entire folder and place it here. Bruh. Now this is how your mesh would look like in the game. Now give it the exact same name as the mesh. <laughs> and on the other area write Unity 3D. <laughs> now just go and click bundle to start bundling. Yay! We successfully bundled this hair. Now we would spawn it in the game. Now this is your bundle and right click on it and choose show in explorer to locate it. Once you locate it copy it and then go to Yandere simulators folder. Then into Yandere simulators data and then into streaming assets and then into pose mode. And then paste it right there. Now go to the folder named cutscenes and make a new text file there. Name it whatever you like and open it. Now this command would be in the description below. Just copy it and paste it. And now replace the object with the name that you gave to your mesh and its folder. <coughs> this is the one in my case. Open the game by clicking the pose mode. Now since you have installed pose mode, just press L to load into the game. Okay we are here. Now first let's get rid of these annoying students. So now we would press the X key, and this menu would open. Use the WASD keys to go up or down. Choose Edit Scene, then choose Cut Scene, and here is the text file you created go to it and press E. Oh my god the hair did attach to us but its position is messed up. So normally this doesn't happen but if it does happen to you too then fixing it is easy. There is also a position command in the description. Just paste that in your text file and replace the object with the name of your mesh. Now that worked. Oh my god look at my twin sister.
But that's not it. Now what would you do if you wanted to attach the same hair on a student? Well that's very easy. My dog stepped on a bee. So I have my assistant to help me over here. So I have summoned our guinea pig and as you can see, she is not cooperative at all. Bitch! Okay so I have forced my client to stay still and now to attach the hair to her first make sure you know what their face looks like. Okay so now go to the text file, and now you have to replace some commands. First we need this student's reference name. Pussy. What is that you may ask? A student reference name is something that is used by the game to identify a specific entity. In simpler words just go to the portraits folder and look for the student that you want to attach it to. As you can see it's written student 45, and to know this student's name go to the JSON files and find the student number 45. Her name is Efudena Ramono, which means that her reference name would be student 45 Efudena Ramono. Similarly how Kokonas would be student 30 Kokona Haruka and Osanas would be student 11 Osana Najimi. The command would look like this. You can copy this from the description as well. Pussy. To attach it on a different student just replace the student reference name with the reference name is the student you want to attach it to. Now let's see if it works. And it did work. Great, look at how happy she looks. Okay so now what if you want to bundle an object and spawn it on a specific place? Well it's very easy. So for this case, I have my mesh and my texture and I would import it in Unity like before. So now I would place my mesh here. And as you can see the screen is completely blank. You can't see the mesh here. Well no worries, just click you mesh from the tab twice and your screen would kinda teleport to the mesh. Now bundle it exactly how you did it before. So now I have my bundle. But I haven't decided where to spawn it. Let's say I want to place it right here. But how would the game figure out about that? You would need coordinates of the place you want it to spawn to. So in case you are wondering, in third dimension games, an object has three specific axes to locate its current position. X axis, Y axis, and Z axis, which basically is the front and back, and right and left, and up and down from a certain point. These three axes are called coordinates which will help the game to exactly locate your desired location. In simple words, to get the coordinates of the exact place to spawn your object, press X and go to stuff, then go to screen and now go to show GUI. Now you can see that there are some coordinates on my screen. The coordinate are of the place where Yandere Chan is currently standing. We would only need X axis, Y axis and Z axis as the rest of them are for rotatory details. So this is my text file and these are the commands and now let's go ahead and replace object with your mesh's name. And this command is actually responsible for the position of the object and its coordinates are currently zero. First one is x-axis and second one is y-axis and third one is z-axis. So you would have to copy the coordinates of Yandere Chan as she is standing exactly where I want the object to spawn it to. And paste these coordinates here. Okay so this is all done. Now let's see if it works. OMG look at this little thing. That's what she said. It looks so cute. Now I think it's not big enough. So to make it bigger we would add another command. I actually made the mesh Damn, 100 son. times bigger than original from the x-axis and the y-axis and the z-axis. Okay where is it? I can't see it. Where is it? Oh, there it is. <coughs> now you may wonder one thing. Why does the position change when I make it bigger? Yay! Well that's a very good question. 
that happens if you don't set the position of the mesh to zero in the Unity. But for me that was not the case as I did make sure to position it to zero. So the reason behind it is that when the mesh was actually being made, its position was not exactly on zero. So after it was exported, that very position became its default position. In simple words, you can actually make the mesh bigger and then adjust the position later. Now to position it correctly. If you pay close attention, when I move forward then the x-axis increases, which means that if I decrease the x-axis of the mesh it would come towards me. So let's decrease it from 29 to 20. Now let's test it out. Bruh. It's still not close enough, let's decrease it even more. <laughs> it still isn't really close. You know what let's just make the number negative. Yeah. Damn, that worked. Now to get your mesh on the track if I walk from the mesh like this. As you can see the z-axis decreases, so let's decrease the, the z-axis of the mesh. <laughs> it's not enough, let's decrease it even more. Oh my god it's way too on the right now. Let's increase it a little. Now it's way too on the left. Let's decrease it a little. Okay now that is perfect. <laughs>